Welcome to the product demo of the Project Planner Advanced Excel Template. This is the newly released version 2 of the Excel Template. In this video, I will start with the blank template and will walk through how data can be added to this template to plan for projects. So now I've opened a brand new copy of the template and so there's no data entered in this template until now and so we will start entering the data. So the first thing we're going to do is enter the planning period start date. So in this example, I'm going to type in September 1st, 2015 as my starting date. And then the ending date would be, let's say, October 31st. And so you can see that the error messages are disappearing after we enter planning period start and end date because this is an important and um, require input for the template. So now the next thing is entering resource information. So usually I would recommend putting in resource IDs as just the ID one, two, three, simple numbers. Resource name, let's just say we want to enter, in this case, I'm not entering a person's name, I'm entering the type of role, but you can enter the name of the person in your team. And then the next few columns are the number of available hours for each resource here for every weekday. So will the project manager be working on Sunday? So let's say in my example, I'm going to put this person is going to take off on Tuesday as a weekend and then we'll be working some hours on other days except Saturday. And then let's say I have 20 is the rate per hour for this resource. Then I'm going to enter the next resource where I can call the web designer and we can have this person take off on Mondays and also on Saturdays. So then I will enter the rate. Let's just have one more resource. So one thing you will notice is that the way I'm adding the resource is to add it at the end of the table. So I'll show you once again. And so let's say in this case, this person is available on every day five hours and cost five per hour. Okay, now this, if I want to add one more resource to this table, I shouldn't be entering it in cell A16. I should be entering it in cell A15 because that is the immediately next row after the table is ended. Right now the table is only this data. So only three resources have been added. If I want to add another one, I have to type here and this will actually add the fourth resource. And you see a message here saying, please enter resource name. And that's because we have not entered the name yet. And once we enter the name, then that message will go away and now we can enter these numbers. So if I want to remove a resource, select this the row where you want to delete, which one you want to delete and right click, delete table rows. So now you will see what happens. It removed it and the table now is now only this data. So that is how you would remove a resource and you can add more up to 30. So the next important piece is company weekends. By default, we have Saturday and Sunday selected, but if you want, for example, Tuesdays to be weekends, then you can just choose yes, and that will get added as a weekend. So that's very simple. So I'm going to remove this. And company holidays, let's just enter a specific day as company holiday, and you can give a name to it if you would like. But basically what we are doing now is to enter holidays and if I, there's only one and if I want to delete a row, same way, right click, delete table rows and that will go away. That's it. Now the resource personal leave, so I want to provide for example the web designer the September 15th is only going to be available for four, is not going to be available for four hours. So keep in mind that this is the number of hours the person is going to take off, meaning four hours the person is going to be on leave. And this will be used by the template to figure out how many hours that person will be available. Let me type in one more date here. 
and as you can see here you can enter the date in different formats and Excel will still be able to figure it out the person is going to be out for three hours so let's keep that there so the way the resource time is actually taken into account September 15th so let's look at the date here September 15th is going to be a Tuesday so the web designer usually spends eight hours at work on Tuesdays but the web designer is going to take four hours off so on 15th September the resource is available for eight minus four four hours only and we can check that in the resource view web designer September 15th only four so even though the other day is eight, available eight hours but on 15th only available for four hours and that's because we have said he's going to take four, three, four hours on leave so if I put three hours on leave that means the person will be available for five hours to work so that is how the resource leave personal leave works I'm going to move on to the project sheet in the project sheet again there's nothing entered at this point so you will have project uh, error messages here to enter the project ID enter the project name and we will do so now so let's enter a project ID again I like to keep it simple one project one and in this case the project priority is a required field so I'm gonna set it as project priority one um, you can enter description if you would like and if you want um, uh, the optional uh, information you can enter them so we'll come back to that later project ID two and we'll do project two projects there are two projects let's say and I'm you will see that there is an error message here that says no tasks have been entered yet and that's because we haven't gone to the task yet so it's okay now let's go to the task sheet and actually enter some tasks click on cell a8 here put in one essentially saying it's task ID so it's unique list of numbers that you would like to enter so I use one two three and so you can use your own unique IDs and task ID one I'm going to choose the project and I'm going to type in the tasks name and this is going to be assigned to the project manager and let's say it's going to take five hours of work and then the these are the required fields all these light blue are optional which we will cover later uh, but since we want to start with a very simple example I'm not going to cover that all the green colored columns are a, are calculated fields so please don't edit them or modify the formulas in there because that will impact the functioning of the template so now continuing with the task entry so I'm going to put in two I'm going to use the same project name and this time we're going to develop the site and this will be done by the developer and it is going to you can also type in or you can choose from the drop down menu and this is going to be 50 hours of work and you see that the error messages or the task plan result is instantly updating so for example as soon as I enter the task ID it'll tell me there is an error because we haven't entered the project name yet so let me enter the project name and the error message will change because it needs me it needs me to enter the task name and so I am going to enter that providing the requirements to designer is the next thing project manager can do it and the error messages continue to update now that I've entered all the required fields it will tell me that the task plan result is will complete on time so will complete on time at this point means that this task will complete during the planning period the planning period is 1st September to 31st October so all this is saying is that these tasks will complete during that window now we'll look closely into that in a few minutes but now let's finish up entering the task information for the first project I want to select the project name task is design the site web designing the site is going to be done by the web designer and it might take 10 hours to do so now one tip about entering the tasks in a table and this applies to any Excel table that you're entering data and I use it in all my templates so if you're using any of my other templates too this applies so in order to add a new task to this table first thing you need to understand is what is already in this table so in order to know what is the 
what does the table contain right now click on any cell press control A immediately all these cells got selected and that is because this is the entire table data so row 8 to row 11 column A to column R that is the area within the table data right now so if you want to enter any new row to this table you cannot enter here for example let me type in here that doesn't get added into the table you need to enter in the row immediately following the end of the table so I have to enter something here so I'm going to type in 5 and now you see immediately the table was ex table expanded and all these cells now wherever there are formulas there will be formulas so it give me it gives me error no project name immediately because now this is a part of the table so I can select the project name and I can enter the task here which is basically approving the site this will be this will be with the project manager and I'm going to say five hours of work and the final task is going to be project one launch site and this is going to be done by the developer for 10 hours of work so now we have entered the required information for the template to build out the schedule for this project and now we can see that by going to the plan summary you will see that there are two projects one of them is planned and the one will complete so the second project is not planned yet and that's because you can see that we have not entered any tasks and that's why it does not have any information in the plan summary but if you enter more tasks in the task sheet then the plan summary will automatically get updated it will give you the cost it will give you all the important dates around the project one and as you scroll to the right you will see the timeline view weekly and basically it shows you where the um, project started and ended and you can also see the resource summary how many hours the resources are being utilized for and the resource utilization rate developer is used 28% of the available time project manager 7% web designer 4% this is all automatically calculated when we go to the task schedule you will see all the tasks listed here with all the relevant information and as I scroll to the right I can see the Gantt chart and the Gantt chart doesn't show anything yet and that's because you have to put in a start date so I'm going to put in the start date September 1st and now you can see that the Gantt chart appears I can also change it to weekly or monthly if that's how I would like to see it in our simple sample project daily makes more sense because we it's only for a short duration now in order to continue we can enter the second project's tasks just as easy as it is by typing in another ID and choosing project 2 in the drop down and then you can type in the task name for the second project and you can assign it this way and as I'm entering this information now when I go to the plan summary it will now have project 2 and it will give you the project planning result and then you can see all this automatically calculating all you have to do is the first three sheets of data entry the first sheet is a one-time thing where you can set the basic availability project is each row per project task will be every task will be entered as a new row and very few required fields and the template will take care of the scheduling and it'll give you the exact schedule it'll also provide you each day the resources availability and the number of hours scheduled for each resource daily it's also provided everything is all ready to be printed as well now for a couple of advanced features so you can put in a task preferred start date so if you don't want this um, specific task to start before September 14th you can type in September 14th and now when I go to the schedule I will see that the first task is not starting until September 14th that doesn't impact any other tasks at this point but in reality we know that the tasks are dependent on each other so that is the next feature we're going to see so for example providing requirements to developer has to be done first before the developer actually can develop the site
that's basic so in order to build that relationship all we have to do is to come to the second task I'm going to click on here type in one and that one is the task ID for the previous task which is providing requirements to developer and similarly providing requirements to designer has to be completed first before we can design the site so coming over here it's dependent on task ID 3. Approving the site can only be done after the designer designs it and the developer develops it. So approving can only be done after task 2 and task 4. So you can have up to two predecessors in this template. So I have two predecessors here. Launching the site can only be done after the project manager approves it. So I'm going to put 5. So now we have created dependencies or set predecessors for the tasks. Now let's go and take a look at the schedule. And in this schedule, because if you want to see only one project, I'm going to choose project and I'm going to choose project one and now I'll see only project one. So look at the schedule now. Task preferred start date that we actually entered here that the first task can only start on 14th is having a huge impact on the duration of the project. So one little tip here, if you want to see both this at the same time, I will usually select this, go to go to view, freeze panes. So I've selected column H and I've done freeze panes. And now what I can do is actually I can move across so I can see both the task name and also the GAN shot at the same time. So project one task one we put in a task preferred start date of 14th September so only after that is complete the developer can develop the site so developer only begins work on September 15th and that's why it's taking so long from September 1st to September 14th no work is being done because the developer is waiting for the project manager to provide the requirements and that is how we've built it so if I come back here and I change the task preferred start date. Let's say I don't have any preferred start date. I want it to start as soon as possible. Now let's go and see. Now everything has moved forward. So now the, the project manager does his work on um, September 2nd and September 3rd, the developer can begin the work and then start working on developing the site. So you can see that the predecessors that we set are working, same thing the designer requirements have to be given by the project manager. The next day, the web designer can start the work. So the, the dependencies have been clearly implemented and that is all by entering just the predecessor IDs in here. And one other thing we could do is, let's say we want to give the milestone as the launching the site is a milestone. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to choose Yes, and now I will see, let me go to the task schedule, I will see the milestone in ending on 5th, I mean ending on 22nd September and it's shown in dark blue color cell and you can also see that it's highlighted in bold. So that is the milestone. So very, very quickly in just a few minutes, we have entered the project information, task information. We can see the Gantt chart, we can see the summary report, schedule, everything built automatically for us and we can print it very easily and um, share it with other team members as needed. If you have any questions around the terminology used in this template or some of the calculations done, you can see the help sheet where the information that is the template is expecting to have and also how it's calculating certain things are explained in detail. And if there are further questions, you can definitely use the links over here to go to a product page or the support page where you can post your comments and you can also um, email or go to a site um, to get more information about this template. Thank you very much for watching the video.